to share with you ladies today some information about business credit, um, how to establish business credit, what it really means, um, because there are a, a lot um, of myths in regards to business credit. And um, over and over again, I always hear, um, you know, from other business owners, oh yeah, I'm building my business credit. Um, you know, I have a business credit card, da, 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 da. And, but, you know, and I, and I ask, well, do you have a DUNS number? and they don't even know what a DUNS number is. And so I wanna explain what that means and why that is so important, because even if you have a credit card in your business name, doesn't necessarily mean you're building business credit. So we can get started in a moment. Go ahead. Just a quick thing. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, please feel free and put them in the chat down at the bottom. Um, so then Rashonda can go through a presentation and then answer questions at the end if you have any questions. So there's a little chat button at the bottom. Just click that if you have any questions that come to mind and we can answer them at the end. Or you can write them down yourself and remember them for the end too as well. All right, go ahead, Rashonda. Okay, perfect. Now, let's, before we even get started, um, I just kind of like to do a temperature check and kind of figure out how much information um, or how familiar is everyone with Dun and Bradstreet and just business credit in general. Perfect. I'm not that familiar. Just not that. One. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So um, I have some slides, ladies, or actually yeah, some links, and I'm just going to play them so you guys can see them. Um, um, I do have a video, ladies, and it's just going to break down what business credit is, and it's going to break it down in its simplest form, and then that way we can kind of be all on one page from the Dun and Bradstreet's verbiage, its own, their own internal videos, okay? Can you guys see that? Yes. What is business credit? Okay. How is it different can you from hear personal it? credit? Yes. Perfect. Have you thought about your business credit or how it may affect your company's viability? In many ways, business credit is similar to personal credit. You need strong personal credit to buy a house, get a loan, or apply for a card. Having a strong business credit profile may improve your company's chances to qualify for business loans, lower interest rates, and increase cash flow. It may even help you negotiate better payment terms and attract new customers. And just like with personal credit, the earlier you start building your business credit, the better. You wouldn't want to open your first personal credit account the same day you want to buy a house. You want to start small and build credit over time. New business owners credit and personal guarantees to cover business expenses. But there can be real consequences to tying your personal credit to your business credit. The risk of using personal guarantees grows as your business grows. With growth comes bigger expenses and in turn greater personal liability. Using personal credit to pay for business expenses can also skew your company's debt to income ratio on its financial statements. And banks or other companies looking to do business with you may pull your personal credit report, which could negatively impact your personal credit each time your report is pulled. But if your personal and business credit are kept separate, your personal credit may remain untouched as there is no negative effect when someone checks a business credit file. Both you and your business can be better off if you separate your personal and business credit. Okay, so does that make any sense so far? Yes. Okay, okay. So kind of leading into what I was speaking upon what earlier. Separate personal credit from my business Let's pause this. Okay, so kind of ladies, leading on to what I was talking about earlier when I say you can have a business credit card um, in your business name and still not be building business credit. And so they kind of talked about, you know, how they're, our, our differences. For one, um, most people, they establish these accounts utilizing their EIN number. Um, every, I'm sure every one of you guys has an EIN number, is that correct? And is that how you guys been setting up accounts so far? 
Yes. Okay, okay. So most of the accounts that you'll set up will require an EIN number, like your bank accounts, things like that. And that's literally for tax purposes. Um, that allows for, um, you know, government entities uh, like IRS, taxes, things like that, to kind of keep a track on what's going in the accounts, what's going out. Um, it kind of helps with um, the separation of money laundry and things of that nature, right? But if you were to go and you know, purchase a location, then there's no EIN report with scores and ratings, right? And so the report, your business credit report is directly tied to the DUNS number. And so the DUNS number is also a nine digit indicator, just like our social security numbers, nine digits. And that uh, number is directly tied to the business credit file. Does that make sense? I don't want to do information overload. Okay. Yeah. So with that credit file, um, there are a lot of businesses out there that have been established for years and they have a, a DUNS number and they may not utilize it. They may not operate their business credit file, um, you know, handle it, um, probably never seen the report. And then there's companies that rely on this day in, day out. Um, sometimes these dividing factors determine, you know, how you're doing business and um, you know, what's on the line. Anytime you're working with a government entity, if you're going after bids, grants, funding, SBA, things like that, you have to have a DUNS number. It's a requirement. Okay. Um, so let's go on to the next video. It's going to kind of break down scores, ratings, the DUNS number, and how that works. Okay, and then um, we're going to move along into trade references, and that's going to kind of break down how we build on business credit, okay, because this is completely different than the way we build our personal credit. Okay. Understanding your DNB scores and ratings, an overview. A DNB business credit profile consists of four predictive scores and two performance based scores. Four predictive scores suggest how a business may perform over the next 12 months. First, the delinquency predictor score helps predict whether a business will pay its bills on time. Second, the financial stress score predicts the chance that a business will experience financial distress. Third, the supplier evaluation risk rating predicts whether a business will stop delivering its goods and services. Finally, the viability rating provides a holistic assessment of a company's health to help you decide whether to work with it. Performance-based scores use historical information in a company's DNB credit profile. They paint a picture of your company's past performance. The first is the Paydex score, which indicates how a company has paid its bills over the last 24 months. The next is the DNB rating, which indicates a company's net worth range based on company financial statements, as well as a company's overall condition. If a company's financial statements are not provided, the score is based on company size, industry, their related factors. Taken together, these scores can help showcase a company's strengths to potential partners, vendors, suppliers, and lending institutions. The good news is that unlike personal credit, you have the ability to help influence your company's credit file by submitting positive payment history to Dun & Bradstreet for verification and acceptance. All right. Okay. So I really wanted you guys to see that because that's extremely important. Okay. Um, when it comes to building and establishing business credit, um, I know in the video, she said you have the ability to help to impact your report. So did everybody hear that? Um, so when it comes to business scores and ratings, your scores and ratings are dollar weighted. And so they're based on the bills you pay. Um, and the thing about it is, you're gonna, you, whenever you run a business, you're, you, you have bills to pay. That's just the bottom line. There's gonna be some kind of overhead. And the way that we operate in our business right now, a lot of us, we're not getting credit for those bills that we're paying. Our company is not reflecting um, those adequate scores and ratings um, that showcase the viability of our companies. And the reason being is because typically we're not managing our own report. Okay, so I'm gonna break that down and kind of what that means, okay? Um, we all know when it comes to personal credit, let's say, for example, we have our cell phone bill. Let's say we have Verizon, right? We have a Verizon bill, we have it in our name, we pay this bill every, each and every month. Now, um, you know, nowadays it's kind of like they're trying to do away with contracts, but 
Sometimes they bring it back. It just depends on the season. But let's say we were to break our contract with, with Verizon or just not pay the bill. Okay. If we weren't to pay, the, if we did not pay our bill with Verizon, um, all of a sudden we would probably see that bill in our collections report. But the whole time that we were paying that bill, we probably never seen a positive payment. Does that make sense? Like they're not, they're not re really reporting it until it's time for them to collect. Otherwise, you know, it, it doesn't matter to them, right? So companies do not have to automatically report. And with business credit, it's extremely rare that companies will automatically report. The reason is because they typically have to pay to do it. Now, if a company is automatically utilizing Dun & Bradstreet um, and, you know, for whatever business contracts that they have, um, some of those companies do automatically report and sometimes a company can get lucky by utilizing a company that automatically reports. They will never tell you what those companies are. Um, if you were to contact Dun & Bradstreet, they would say, um, you know, companies are not required to automatically report typically, something to that nature. Um, but if you were to set up a, a vendor account, you know, depending on what type of business your company is in, then you could always ask your vendor, hey, are you guys familiar with Dun & Bradstreet? Do you report to Dun & Bradstreet? So that's one way to try to start getting those balances reported and getting credit for those um, expenditures. The other way is you can take matters into your own hand and you can be actually begin to report your own expenses. And that's through the credit builder program that they have through Dun & Bradstreet. And it is a paid service, but it is a very viable service to companies, especially if you're looking to scale, because it also allows you to create that um, continue, shall I say, to create that separation that most people are looking to do when they are setting up their LLC. Because most people want to, you know, create that separation where they're not overwhelming their personal credit on their business expenditures. Or if something like Corona happens, right? We're all locked down and all these companies are trying to figure out what to do, what way to go. If a company, you know, there's companies, restaurants especially, where, um, you know, these last couple of weeks have been very difficult and we might not be able to see them um, pursue after this. Now, if they had to file bankruptcy, of, you know, for any debt that they have, they really don't want that to reflect on their personal credit. That would be something that they would want to um, make sure that their business credit and those um, accounts were all set up properly. So that way, if they needed to dissolve the business, they have that protection of some sort over their personal assets. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, okay. So I want everyone to know that the DUNS number is completely free. It is a free process. It is completely free. If you're working with any government entities, you can call them, let them know. They'll get you a DUNS number within 24 hours. You do have the ability to go online and apply for a DUNS number. Um, that process typically takes about 30 business days for you to receive a DUNS number. And then you have the ability to start impacting some of, the, some of the, your personal things like address, business, things like that. When it comes to your personal credit, um, which differs from your business credit, Dun & Bradstreet will verify everything that you submit with their credit builder program. So let's say you have you know, $10,000 in inventory that you're paying each month, um, your light bill, your um, electric bills, whatever you, these bills are, credit card bills, whatever, you submit everything. They verify those bills and expenditures and then they get that onto the report. Typically they continue to report up to, you know, um, two years. And that is actually how you build your scores and ratings because it's dollar weighted. So the more money that you can showcase that is running out of your business showcases that your company has that viability that the um, link was talking about. And those links will be there. So I kind of want you guys to kind of go back through them after we talk and it might make, you know, the more you look at it, just kind of breaks things down a little bit more. You can always call myself or a specialist at Dun & Bradstreet. Um, but I just want you guys to know it's so important to begin to understand how to build and how to separate your EIN number from your DUNS number when that's important. If you need net terms, lines of credit, things of that nature, or if you're going to be working with another company, let's say you have a company, um, your company is really successful. Another company reaches out to you and they say, you know, we really want to partner up with this really with this big project we have going on. Um, you know, there's a lot on the line here. 
And when you're working with another major company, and let's say you have a joint venture, anything that company does can affect your company's viability and reputation. So before you take that offer, you might also want to do a business credit report on that company as well. Because your business credit report, ladies, it talks way much more than just scores and ratings. It'll showcase liens, judgments, lawsuits, um, any derogatory things that have happened in this company. So you can see the, the health of that company in the report. And that also helps you to mitigate your risk when you're looking to work with other companies. So you can pay to build your report. Um, of course, everything that goes on the report is verified. So when you're purchasing reports from other companies, you can always trust that you're getting legitimate and firsthand information. Um, Dun & Bradstreet is the leading um, business when it comes to business credit, um, I do want to say, you know, there are other companies out there like Equifax, Experian, things like that, that offer a business credit report. But a lot of times their information is getting funneled through Dun & Bradstreet, so it may not be real-time information with those other sources. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to go into trade references because it just talks about how we... Um, Build on that, and then I'll open it up for questions, ladies. What are trade references? How can they impact my business credit file? Many of DNB's scores and ratings are calculated using information on how your company pays its bills. Do you generally pay your bills on time, or are you consistently behind on payments? DNB can collect this information from suppliers, vendors, and other partners. These credit references or payment experiences are called trade references oh. and are a major factor in scores such as the Paydex. DNB works with thousands of U.S. companies that report payment experiences on a regular basis, but not all companies automatically report their payment experiences. If you are paying your bills on time and working with suppliers that don't report payment experiences done in Bradstreet, your business credit profile may not be telling the full story of your business creditworthiness or financial strength. For example, Dun & Bradstreet needs three trade references to calculate a Paydex score. That means if you don't have three suppliers reporting payment experiences to Dun & Bradstreet, it may not be able to assign a Paydex score to your company. Not having a Paydex score could contribute to an incomplete business credit profile. An incomplete file may result in higher premiums, higher interest rates, lost business, or challenges in raising capital. Don't be overwhelmed. You can take steps to help improve your business credit file. To learn more about impacting your business credit, watch our video on improving business credit. Now, any questions so far? If you are, if you are muted, this is Aaliyah, if you are muted um, and you do have a question, you're more than welcome to unmute yourself at any time. Or if you're on your computer, you're more than welcome to hit the chat button too as well. Of course, if you're a more private individual too as well, we'll also um, share with Shonda's information if you have personal questions regarding your business afterwards too as well. Well, these aren't pretty much uh, the tricks to the trade as far as like understanding why it's important, understanding how it can impact your company and why people look at it, um, you know, what decisions are being made. But one thing that I want everyone to know that I think it's very, very important, um, when Dun & Bradstreet creates business credit files, um, I know I mentioned earlier, you can always go on Dun & Bradstreet and get a free Dun's number at any time. I want people to know that there is an opportunity that, or a possibility rather, that you can go on to the website and there could already be a Dun's number assigned for your company without your knowledge. Because if there's a lot of um, information, a lot of data, you have a lot of marketing materials, a lot of online presence, um, you have, um, you know, you're out there, your social media presence, et cetera. Dun & Bradstreet, their, their company, it contains so much data that they will deem you as a viable, a viable company and they will automatically generate Dun's number for you. And if you already have a dense number and you're not managing that file and you have a company, let's say you could be at a happy hour, just casually having a conversation and the person next to you is CFO of, I don't know, Chase Bank, and you just pitch the idea 
and he gave you his business card, he could actually go back to his office and request a copy of your business credit report with or without your consent. So one of the reasons why this is extremely important is because if you are scaling your business, if you are mentioning, you are meeting partners or networking or meeting investors, you always want to make sure that you're showcasing the best of the, of the viability of your company because you never know who could be looking. Um, and the only time that I would say you would possibly have any type of issues adding trade references to your file um, would be if your um, vendors are not domestic. Um, it is hard to get those international vendors. Um, actually, they will not report. So you want to make sure that you are reporting all of your domestic vendors that you have here. Um, that's going to be extremely helpful to help you build and showcase that strength of your business so you can continue to scale and continue to build your family with your personal and keep your business separated. So that's pretty much it, ladies. So, uh, Rishanda, I want to ask you um, one question uh, before uh -huh. we uh, log off. Of course, if anybody else has questions, feel free to interrupt me at any time. Um, but so for someone who is um, either just starting their business or um, they're considering starting their business from a business credit standpoint, what would you say were the, would be the beginning steps for them to start if this is the first time they've ever heard of business credit? Oh yeah, so the first thing I would do is I would log into the Dun & Bradstreet website or give them a call. Um, you can always go, their, their 1-800 number um, is you know, online um, and they'll you know, break it down. They can do an immediate search on your company um, by your, just your name, your business name, your address, just simple information to see if you already have a Dun's number created. So that would, I would say that'd be the first step. And even if you're a new company, because if you started marketing or you started doing research and, you know, discovery for your company five years ago, and you've been, you know, let's say you've had a business bank account, you know, you never know, you just might have a business credit file. Okay. Um, and if you don't, um, then you would just start the application process. You can do it over the phone. You can do it online. Um, but, you know, you can always reach out to me. My contact information is there. And, I, you know, so I would be more than happy to help anyone to just kind of get that going. Um, but secondly, um, get that. You would be able to start building business credit, even at the new company, within the first 30 business days. So with Dun and Bradstreet, one thing that everyone should know is that you have the ability to go back one full year and any of those expenditures that you paid out to, to get your business up and running, you want to report those. So if you bought inventory, even if it was sample inventory, um, if you paid for a website and marketing materials, things like that, um, you know, I would go and try to get all of those expenses reported because you know, you're showcasing some strength really early on, and that can also showcase um, a great, as a great look for your company. Perfect, thank you so much for answering that. And then um, of course, if anybody wants to get in contact with Rashonda, um, we did put her, um, we did tag her in her post on our Instagram page. Um, and then so everybody knows that is on here uh, who's not familiar with Advanced and Emerge Women, uh, we will be posting, uh, net, we'll, we'll have a page created um, next week that will have these workshops um, available, uh, the recordings like this workshop, for example, was recorded. Um, so if you want to go back and, you know, if you joined a little late and you want to hear it from the beginning that will be available and um, we'll also provide um, the information of course of our speakers in case you want to reach out to them directly too as well um, but um, Rashonda before we go just because we had some new people and will you please just um, mention your business one more time um, what you do besides you know the consulting um, and then we'll look at it <laughs> Yes, yeah, so my company is African Everything, um, and the website's right here as well, or africaneverything.com, and just all my contact information, ladies, so you can also reach out to me. Um, but what we do is we are a women's co-op, and so we import goods from all over Africa. We have six countries that we're currently working with, um, Ghana, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Madagascar, 
I feel like I'm missing someone. Oh, also, also in Nepal. We have a group in Nepal. And so we basically take these ladies' handmade items all over the country. We do pop-up shows and we do different trade shows, fairs, different events. We sell the goods um, and then we send proceeds back. The proceeds not only help these ladies survive, but they also help the children. So we help pay for education, healthcare, food, different resources. Um, and we're working on some really great projects right now. So we will be um, launching that information in our newsletter. So if you guys want to know more information about that, definitely uh, log onto the website, take a look at the newsletter. Um, we have a really big project coming up, working with ASU and the UN, um, some tiny homes out here for these individuals. So we are very excited about that. So if you want to be a part of that, uh, reach out to us as well. <laughs> oh, you're so amazing. Thank you so much, Shonda, for taking this time to share all this information. And uh, we look forward to see everybody at the next workshop. I hope everyone has a, a wonderful day. Oh, I guess my, my face is not in there, but... Uh, <laughs> But here I, here I am, cheese. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you so much again, Rashonda. Thank you, ladies. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>